Hello and welcome to this video about the design and manufacture of active pickups. In this video we'll discuss the mechanics of how an active pickup works, how they're designed and how they're typically constructed. We'll be looking at the most popular style of black cap high output active pickups regularly found in metal and rock, but they have also been found in other genres as different as jazz for example due to their compressed nature. If we peel back the black cap we have something that looks like this below. It may look pretty alien, but the bit that happens before the active part actually functions very similarly to our standard passive humbucker. Let's begin by identifying each component. First we have our two coils of copper wire, the same as a normal humbucker. However, where these differ is the dimensions of the coils, where they actually more closely resemble a mini humbucker. These close aperture coils are thinner and taller than a standard humbucker, giving them a comparatively tighter and brighter tone. Next, inside each coil we have a big steel blade. These transfer the magnetism of the bar magnet sitting underneath the coils to the strings above. These perform exactly the same function as your typical screws and slugs of a normal humbucker. There are benefits to blades. They transfer magnetism evenly over the string spread, so that bending does not result in any note dropout. They are a big mass of metal inside our coils, increasing the inductance to maximise the output of the pickup. And crucially, they allow a narrower coil for the benefits previously discussed. Under the coils and beside the bottom of each of our blades is our bar magnet, as just mentioned, exactly the same as a standard humbucker in both form and function. Sometimes we'll actually see two bar magnets inside the coils themselves, instead of the steel bars. These work much in the same way that the rod magnets of a standard single coil work. This is very similar to the design of a Firebird pickup. This design gives the tone a punchier, brighter and clearer character. Choosing either method of construction is entirely a choice for tone shaping. Speaking of tone shaping, let's get onto the part where the majority of the tone shaping takes place, the active preamp. Usually we have a single output from a humbucker where we connect the coils in series. This is why you need to connect the two output wires together of a humbucker with a four conductor output lead. But on an active pickup, we feed the two inputs of our differential amplifier with each coil individually. The differential amplifier works by inverting the output of one of the coils whilst the other is not inverted. In addition to this, it amplifies and combines both inputs. The amplifier amplifies the difference between the inputs, which is where the name differential amplifier comes from. The hum of each coil is initially in phase, but when one is inverted, the amplifier cancels the two hums out, giving active pickups a very quiet noise floor. The amplifier itself doesn't do much to the tone of the pickup, it just makes it louder. It's the tone shaping at either end of the preamp circuit that affects what the active pickup tone is in comparison to what it is as a passive pickup. Some variation of this schematic is what almost every active pickup has inside. Notice that it's really quite simple. In this video we'll discuss what each component is doing to the tone in general terms. All active pickups will have different values for each of these components, so we won't delve into specific values. On the leftmost side we have our two inputs from each of our pickup coils. These inputs are fed through a capacitor and a resistor before they arrive to the amplifier. The capacitor reduces the base frequencies the resistor in series with the coil interacts with the internal capacitance of the coil to darken this input. This resistor is also critical to the preamp as it sets the gain of the amplifier in conjunction with the negative feedback resistor. The resistor path to ground also add up to load the coil, essentially making it sound darker, more compressed and reducing the output a little bit. On the other input we have our bias setting resistors. When they're chosen to be the same value we get half our battery voltage at the input giving us the maximum headroom. We can unbalance them for extra internal clipping if we want. These resistors also load the pickup, just like the resistors at the other side did, to make the tones sound darker, more compressed, and have a slightly lower output again. We also have the resistor and capacitor exactly the same as the other side, affecting the tone in exactly the same way. The series resistors on both sides are significant to the tone shaping in another way that's not yet been mentioned. In many active pickups, they're different values. The resistance interacts with the capacitance of the pickup coils, a higher value gives a darker tone. When we combine the two coils in the preamp, if they are voiced differently, we'll have a broader resonant frequency peak, giving the pickup a clearer, more dynamic tone. Now we move on to the output of the amplifier. Here we have only three simple components, two resistors and a single capacitor. The capacitor works exactly the same way as the capacitors in series work before. However, it's standard to put a value of capacitor in this position of a high enough value that it does not colour the tone. Its function is to block the DC voltage from the preamp from getting to the output. The two resistors are our impedance setting resistor and a loading resistor. 
the output signal of the amplifier is distributed between these resistors and the external loads, typically the load of your guitar volume and tone controls and the amp input. These values are specifically chosen so that we have a low output impedance compared to a passive pickup, and so that the pickup works effectively with 25k volume and tone potentiometers. The low output impedance means that the inherent capacitance of guitar cables has a much lesser effect on the treble. This means that we can have much longer cables without experiencing significant treble loss. And that's just about it for the inner workings of an active humbucker. This video skimmed over a few important concepts that will be broken down more thoroughly in future videos for those who want to learn more. Thank you for watching this video and if you enjoyed it please like the video and subscribe for more video content like this.